Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we're going to have a very dynamic and I'm sure insightful uh, discussion into the next steps uh, for uh, Thai and uh, Hong Kong gemstone and jewellery trade beating the crisis. Um, I'm very pleased to uh, introduce you all to Mrs. Uh, Shannon Pat, who is the Executive Director of, of the um, Thai Trade Center in Hong Kong. Um, hello, Mrs. Shannon Pat, how are you today? Sadika, uh, Sadika, nice to meet you all. Um, my name is Shannon Pat, I'm a Trade Commissioner and Kongsun at the Thai Consulate in Hong Kong. And my another position uh, here is called uh, Executive Director at the Thai Trade Center in Hong Kong, is under the Department of International Trade Promotion, Ministry of Commerce of Thailand. Thank you, so thank you very much. Um, we're now going to show a short video uh, which shows the last edition of the Bangkok Gems and Jewellery Fair. Um, and then uh, Mrs. Shannon Pat is going to give a presentation about the outlook for Thai Hong Kong uh, gems and jewellery trade. So uh, let's show the video. Great, well, thank you so much for that. It was great to see the video with the sound, um, a really nice video and brought back some uh, special memories of having attended the Bangkok Gems and Jewelry Fair in February this year before the lockdown. Um, just to remind everybody that the next trade fair of the Bangkok Gems and Jewelry Fair has been rescheduled to the 23rd to the 27th of February, 2021. Uh, there will be a special online edition um, of the event between the 2nd and 4th of November. Um, let's move on to uh, the presentation by Mrs. Chanon Pat, talking okay. about the outlook and challenges for Hong Kong, Thai, gem and jewellery trade. Uh, Mrs. Chanon Pat, over to you. And after that, we'll go into our discussion with the panelists. Okay, thank you. So you all see my presentation? Yes, very clearly. Okay, um, so um, I will start with the, um, okay, for today. First of all, um, I would like to give you an overview of the situation of gems and jewelry business between Hong Kong and Thailand. Okay, uh, no matter, okay, I will start with this one that no matter, Thailand is the resource, natural resources, but we also do the import from the world that you may see. Mostly we import gold and diamonds. See, 
for the Diamond Thailand import from India, Hong Kong, and Israel. For gold, we import from Switzerland, Hong Kong, and Australia. But since the 2020, since the COVID start, we import from Singapore, Hong Kong, and Cambodia. So that you can see Hong Kong is a very important for the Thailand market. So for the export, uh, our key export products is gold, silver jewelries, gold jewelries, Polish diamond, Polish precious stone, and the Polish semi-precious stone. For 2019, you can see that gold, silver, color stone, and other are increasing. However, since January 2020, every item is down when excluding goals, the revenue is around 36% decreasing. I will go on for the um, export um, destination, the key export market of Thailand. You can see that the first one is EU, US, and of course, Hong Kong is very important. And the next one for the overall situation in Hong Kong right now, actually everything uh, import and export is uh, decreasing. Like this one for the import from Hong, for Hong Kong is decreasing 11% and export is 5%. For the Hong Kong gem and jewelry import value from Thailand, actually mostly uh, decreasing um, because of the pandemic, I'm sure. Um, and then we will see how can Thailand strengthen their relationship with Hong Kong market to fight with the pandemic. I will start with this one that Thailand has a very strong industry support. The first one, the government, the Department of International Trade Promotion. We do um, the online and offline platform. For the online, we also have the ThaiTrade.com. And the offline, we have the Bangkok Gem and Jerry Fair that you all know. And not only that, we also support with the entrepreneur by giving them fund for the SME Proactive that they can go for the uh, uh, to go to the trade fair anywhere around the world. So the, the ITP will support them for the fund. And also we have the public organization, it's called the GIT. That uh, The GIT is the public organization to certify the quality and standard of Thai STEM and jewelry in such a way that accepted internationally. Building this pandemic situation, uh, the main channel to survive in this business is uh, online, of course, and the GIT has a campaign that's called Buy with Confidence to, to make sure that um, um, the seller, actually the seller who want to sell it online, that they can get the GIT certification to build a confidential buyer. So it's a lot of cheating online. But if you are the buyer, if you see the GIT certification that you can make sure and confident that it's a, it's a meta standard, quality standard with the GIT. Moreover, the ITP in Hong Kong, we also do the strategy to cope with the impact of the COVID-19 to prepare for a certain boom in the virtual shopping during this time. And we also promote uh, what Thailand can offer, like the showcase potential of over B2B product and to further expose Bangkok gems and jewelry fair to the Hong Kong market and to educate your Hong Kong publics. Not only that, for the digital upgrade, we also use the digital media platform to convey information, shaping ties, stories, images, and connect with traders, like today that we also do the webinar. And we have the co collaboration with government and organization, such as the Hong Kong Trade Development Council and the CMA, the Chinese Manufacturer Association of the Hong Kong, and also we have the strategic partner that the SKJJA, SKJMA, and IJDA. The JJA is Hong Kong Jewelry Gem Manufacturers Association, and the SKJMA is the Hong Kong Jewelry Manufacturer Association, and IJDA, of course, International Jewelry Designer Association that they all comes today. What are the strengths of the Thailand jewelry industry? So, uh, Thailand, we have a high quality natural resources, uh, especially that we have the gemstones. 
uh, in Chantaburi, the Chantaburi that we can call the city of gems, and in Drat province, that the home of Siamese ruby. We have gold all around the country in the Pachuk Kirikan, Chiang Rai, Chiang Mai, Loi, and the south of Thailand in Naratiwa in Naratiwa and uh, for the silver we have in the Kanchanaburi not only that in Kanchanaburi we also have the blue supply then Thailand have a strength for the strategic location Thailand has a very good one because we are located in the heart of ASEAN and we can be the gateway to ASEAN to the about more than 640 million ASEAN population same as Hong Kong is a gateway to China. Moreover, we also have ASEAN Hong Kong FTA that already came into force since um, June 11 last year and we give on the tariff cut, uh, tariff cut on goods, especially for the previous stone. I think it's about the five years or six years from now. And for the Thailand, it's also for the ease of doing business. You can see from the index, this one from the World Bank, Hong Kong is number is number three, and Thailand is 21st, followed by Germany 22nd, and Canada is 23rd, by Vietnam is 17th. Not only that, uh, from the US New and World Report and the ranking for the best country to start a business, in 2020, Thailand is ranked number one. So make sure that if you want to have a business or factory location to Thailand, we have a lot of uh, benefit for you. Like um, we have the EEC project, the Eastern Economic Corridor, the special economic zone in Thailand, and many of industrial zones just as like Amata, and the uh, jamborees and jewelry business center like jewelry trade center and jamopolis center for the incentive we have the board of investment of thailand give the investment incentive to the foreigner investor that would like to to invest in thailand we have um tax exemption and also exemption of import duty on machinery and uh, raw material. Um, not only that, only, um, and also for the EEC, we have a new incentive package that actually for this one, you also can contact to the uh, board of investments of Thailand. Also, you can contact me if uh, you are in Hong Kong, if you're interested to move to Thailand. And not only that, we also give you for the smart visa. For the smart visa, uh, that we will give you the maximum of four years visa. For the strength of Thai, another, another thing is uh, for the manufacturing expertise, um, that you already know the skill and workforce in Thailand are not only comparable to international standard, but also hard to map anywhere else in the world, as we call a Thailand's magic hands. We also experience for the trading skill, as uh, we also launch for the Bangkok Gems and Jewelry Fair by the Department of International Trade Promotion for the 66th edition already, that is made well, well known all around the world. And the new one, we have the International Chantaburi Gems and Jewelry Festival. This year for uh, the second time in 2020, in uh, the festival in, uh, in December, from the 23rd to 27 of December this year, I hope by that time the COVID already gone that you may can visit to the International Chantaburi Gem and Jewelry Festival. And the last, the last is for the Bangkok Gem and Jewelry Fair this year uh, because of the pandemic. So we have to move to the to February on the 23rd to the 27th. However, we still have the special online edition to be held in the November from 2 
to to fourth of November. It's called the special edition on ground to online exhibition that I hope all of you also can join with them. Um, if you want to learn more opportunity about Thailand, actually Thai Trust Center in Hong Kong, we also have a project for the wellness and elderly care in the, on, in the in August on the 27th and for the property or Thailand property on the September 15th. So please feel free to contact me and you can just scan on the QR code and just go to the Facebook of Thai Trust Center Hong Kong. That's it for today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Shannon Pat. Um, that, I mean, after the initial technical glitch, it was a great overview and it gives a really clear insight into Thai uh, manufacturing and craftsmanship skills, uh, which uh, gives such great opportunities and hope ahead for Thai exports. Um, I'm now going to um, go around the panel um, in turn and ask them a series of questions about their respective expertises. Um, but before I do that, I just to reiterate that the next edition of the trade show itself of the Bangkok Gems and Jewelry Fair will be between the 23rd and 27th of February 2021. But do watch out for the special online edition of the show uh, in November. Um, so um, firstly, I'd like to turn to Mr. Kevin Ung. Uh, Kevin is the um, CEO of High Tech Jewelry Manufacture Limited a member of the Hong Kong Trade Development Council and of its Jewellery Advisory Committee. Mr. Ung, hello, welcome today. Hello, everyone. How are you? How, how, how are things in Hong Kong? What's the weather like in Hong Kong today? It's rainy today, but it means oh. prosperous. So yeah, well, in Chinese, so. It's interesting, I'm sitting in London and it's actually very sunny here. So things, are, the tables are turned. Um, <laughs> let me, ask you about um, your experiences at the Bangkok Gems and Jewellery Fair. I, I know that you've attended on a number of occasions. Uh, how has it been for you? Yeah, I was there uh, 10 years ago and again last year and I saw a lot of changes, especially in terms of the infrastructure, the setup, the traffic and the, um, and the creativity over there. There's a great improvement. And uh, I know that you looked carefully at the uh, jewellery designer section. Um, could you tell me about your impressions of the breadth and uh, range of uh, jewellery design talent at the Bangkok Fair? Yeah, we see a lot of uh, designers uh, coming from EU and also locally from Thailand. And we see they're, they are very keen in um, using different techniques, especially the Thai designers are specialised in in uh, casting or titanium um, coloring um, full heat treatment and also we see a lot of um, um, silver makers um, because um, Thai is known for the craftsmanship for silver making. Yeah. And what feedback did you receive from the designers at the Bangkok show and where were the designers from? Were they from Thailand or other countries or a mix? Um, I see quite a few countries like Italy and uh, Germany. Um, the feedback that I got is um, they are quite excited about the uh, exhibitions uh, because firstly, um, the designer gallery is located right near the, the entrance of, of the show and it drives a lot of traffic. Um, secondly, these, they have um, branch live branch uh, set up and uh, for the demonstration of the craftsmanship. So basically um, the location for them is quite important, especially um, is in the uh, entrance of the show. So they are quite happy about it. Um, you mentioned silver earlier. Uh, during the lockdown period and uh, up until now, the, the gold price has rocketed. In fact, um, uh, earlier this month, gold hit an all-time price high. Do, do you think that this can create opportunities for Thai silver jewellery manufacturing going forward? Uh, the fact that gold is so expensive, is this now a, a great moment for Thai, uh, thai um, silver jewellery exports potentially? Uh, with the gold uh, being um, 
skyrocket uh, record high. Uh, we believe there will be great um, uh, potentials for the um, silver markets. Um, we see a lot of uh, changes recently with, with our orders uh, being placed from gold, now changed to silver. So uh, we see a lot of uh, opportunities there, especially uh, um, uh, during this, this pandemic, uh, many of the uh, factories are, are being affected. So I think there will also be a shift of uh, manufacturing from our side. Okay, so looking back at your experiences having visited the Bangkok Fair, what do you think about the opportunities there to source materials um, such as gemstones and also machinery? Um, is the Bangkok Fair a good opportunity to, for buyers to source um, an array of um, materials and to uh, acquire state-of-the-art jewellery making machinery? Yes, definitely. With, with um, Thai being the uh, gem center, cutting center uh, in the world, uh, we, we can find, as a trader myself, uh, I can basically find uh, commercial, medium, and uh, high qualities of, 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 of gems like uh, rubies, sapphires. And with the uh, location of itself, um, the factory being so close to Bangkok, at the outskirts of Bangkok, uh, basically uh, we can have the parcel being delivered uh, to the show uh, upon our request the next day. So uh, we see it's uh, advantage at the moment. So, yeah. <laughs> and what makes, in your view, the Bangkok Fair special compared with fairs uh, offered by other countries? What is unique uh, about the Bangkok Gems and Jewellery Fair in terms of its offering and ho the hospitality and so forth? Um, I think it's about the whole um, experience um, in terms of uh, leisures and together with uh, business activities going on. Because um, we've been to many of the different trade fairs around the world, like JCK in Vegas, uh, Vicenza Fair in Italy, uh, Basel in Swiss. Um, as what I see from Thai, um, they, they can create uh, such a um, leisure travel uh, business experience uh, in one stop. So like as a buyer, I would definitely go, go again. And, and do, do you see possibilities going forward that um, factories, uh, manufacturing facilities in mainland China and in Hong Kong could potentially um, move some of their operations into Thailand? Um, with um, the current situation here, uh, uh, with the conflict between uh, China and, and U.S., uh, we see a lot of uh, U.S. customers uh, uh, moving orders uh, outside of China. And we believe that um, many of our fellows would uh, move part of the assembly line um, to be based uh, somewhere in uh, Asian countries. So I think uh, as what uh, the director of uh, Hong Kong Trade Development, uh, Hong Kong Trade um, Thai um, Commissioner said, um, like um, uh, Bangkok should be considered as one of the most uh, effective, efficient and um, po productive place uh, available nearby uh, China. Uh, and Thailand, of course, is right at the heart of ASEAN, which makes right. it uh, presumably an attractive uh, location. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Okay, well, thanks so much for that. I I'd like to move on next uh, uh, to Mr. Kenny Au, uh, who is uh, Deputy Chairman of the International Jewellery Designer Association. Um, Mr. Au, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. How are you? Hi, how are you, David? Hi. Good. Greetings from a sunny London this morning. Um, I'd just like to ask you um, your view on how the lockdown period impacted upon creativity and jewellery design. I think uh, there's a big change of the jewellery design direction right now. Uh, because right now, uh, most of the people is, uh, just buy the jewellery uh, one night and uh, they just uh, looking for the price point. And also now we uh, join the design, most of the uh, things we think about is, is the price point. 
and also the the gold weight uh, because of the high high price of the gold and then uh, the jewelry uh, on the website on, on, on the online uh, business the customer they cannot touch the jewelry they're just looking on the screen so that's uh, why we need to have a nice design and also the price point is uh, have very sharp and also we need to have a good uh, presentation uh, good story to uh, um, uh, present the, the whole piece this is the, the, the big change of the of our design direction and what was your own experience, uh, professionally speaking, of the lockdown itself? Uh, how did it, did it affect mm -hmm. your business activities mm -hmm. and, and those of other businesses around you? Uh, I think one of the most important things or uh, the, uh, the big change is the uh, model making. Is uh, After we designed the, the, the jewelry, we sent out the, the design sketches to the factory. Most of the factories is in China. But we cannot go, go to the China to follow up the, the model making. Now we just only can use the uh, uh, online uh, meeting or using the 3D CAD CAM uh, software to follow up to control the model making. That's a difficult part for, for me, and also this is a big change. And now we just only can uh, see on the screen to confirm the phototype. Listen. Okay, um, we, we talked earlier about the dynamics of the precious metals markets uh, and the fact that gold has been soaring. Uh, silver prices have also risen, but not to the anywhere near to the extent that gold prices have risen. Um, do, do, do you find that this will create new opportunities for the use of unusual materials in jewellery design? Are, are you seeing any evidence of this so far? And, and if so, what types of materials? Mm -hmm. uh, before, uh, when I worked with my own business, I have uh, experience to work with, with the uh, enamel jewellery. Uh, at that time, uh, I, um, I'm working on the uh, silver jewellery and uh, have an enamel coating on, on the top. Uh, this, this I want to make some more colorful things to instead of the uh, precious stone or uh, semi-precious stone. And you know, the, the traditional enamel is not easy to control. And uh, I just ordered the raw material of the enamel coating from Italy. They, uh, that kind of the raw material is easy to control. And uh, even the, the, the color, even the, the, the temperature is easy to control. And also the, the finishing piece is very, very, very nice. Yeah. And in, in terms of gemstone demand uh, through the lockdown and now uh, coming out of lockdown, what, what trends have you seen in demand for gemstones in the Hong Kong market? And what is also the, the general perception of Thai manufactured colored gemstones in the Hong Kong market? I think that uh, the uh, precious stone like the ruby, sapphire, or emerald like that is still uh, very popular in Hong Kong. But uh, another thing is, I think the uh, semi precious stone, some, something like the, the uh, turmeric, uh, pink turmeric, something like that, is uh, become popular because more of the people, they can see that the, the, from the magazine, the new trend of the jewelry uh, from these few years, the, uh, the color is quite popular. And also the semi precious stone, uh, most of the Hong Kong and China people, they can uh, accept the semi precious stone much more than the uh, ruby and sapphire, the, the precious stone, yeah, because the price point. And what would you say in terms of the Hong Kong market is the um, perception or reputation of Thai craftsmanship skills and manufacturing capabilities? How are they regarded um, in the trade in Hong Kong? You, you mean the, uh, the, 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 the Thai uh, craftsmanship mm -hmm. and manufacturing? How are they considered in the Hong Kong market? What is the uh, opinion of, of the skills? of Thai craftspeople and manufacturing capabilities? Mm -hmm. I think that um, because the Hong Kong is the, the, the gateway to China and also um, 
uh, most of the Hong Kong people now they are looking for the, some uh, the uh, silver jewelry because the price point of the, the gold jewelry is setting with the diamonds is a little bit high and also the silver jewelry with uh, some of the uh, semi precious stone silver jewelry is very fashionable and I think this is a big uh, opportunities of the uh, Thai factory to do the business. And c can you elaborate a little bit about um, Hong Kong as a gateway to mainland China, uh, the importance of Hong Kong in that regard, and, and what that can potentially mean for exports of Thai manufactured gemstones and jewelry, um, in, not only into Hong Kong, but beyond into the mainland Chinese market? Uh, you know, the, the mainland China market uh, is a little, little bit different from the other countries. Most of the China people, they like the, uh, like the pure gold. Uh, but now they, they change a little bit. Uh, they can accept a, a little bit more of the 18 karat gold, and, uh, 40 karat gold, starting with the diamonds and also the semi precious stone. And the other thing is uh, the silver jewelry. As I said before, the silver silver jewelry set with the uh, semi precious stone is more fashionable, and uh, uh, and also the price is more acceptable. So I think uh, if the Thai uh, factory or, or the Thai uh, company they want to do the business with the Hong Kong or China people, they can think about of the uh, uh, gem set silver jewelry. Okay, well, thank you so much um, for that contribution, Mr. Al. Greatly appreciated. <clears throat> I'd just like to invite the viewers uh, to please do submit questions on the Q&A channel because we are going to have uh, a Q&A session at the end of our presentations today. Uh, looking forward to the outlook um, for Hong Kong uh, Thai gemstone and jewelry trade. Um, I'd now like to introduce everybody uh, to Mr. Fouquet, uh, who is Managing Director of Gembori Company Limited. Mr. Fouquet, welcome. Hi. Good How afternoon, are you today? everybody. Fine. Very good. Well, very glad to, that you're with us today. Um, I'd like to ask you, there have been a number of uh, studies and trends reports showing an increasing appetite for colours. Um, bright and joyful colors in uh, gemstone designs, almost, if you like, an obsession with color uh, among uh, consumers, particularly, say, millennial and Gen Z consumers. Um, how do you think the Thai gemstone and jewelry industry can take advantage of this opportunity, uh, this increased obsession with color by marketing more effectively to uh, international markets? Yeah, I'm ha happy to, to hear this, okay. <laughs> So first of all, Thailand dominates more than 50% of color gemstone production worldwide. And to be more specific, as you know, uh, I, I believe more than 95% of ruby, for example, from Burma and Mozambique, cut in Thailand. And I believe the Bu Safai, we cut about 70% of the supply worldwide. The reason behind this is that uh, Thailand has long experience in buying rough stone heating and cutting. I think more than 40 years, I'm sorry, I'm the second generation. Since I born, I see my father doing uh, Thai ruby in my hometown, Chantaburi. And I see the cutting, I see the factory every day. I know they are all the experts. And since after we running out of the material locally, all these people going overseas to Africa, to Sri Lanka, to Burma, to buy rough stone, and they cut, Heat, doing everything in Thailand. This is the main reason that we are kind of very good in gemstone manufacturing. The second reason which is very important is that our Thai government really support uh, gemstone industry. They come up with the uh, many tax benefit like uh, we don't have any duty on import rough stone, we don't have VAT on buying rough, also, the other ministry, like uh, Ministry of Commerce, by Department of International Trade Promotion, and also the Thai Trade Center around the world, very really promote uh, trading for the gemstone a lot. Yeah, this is the main reason that Thailand is the right place to buy color gemstone. And do you think, in a way, the pandemic, because of the psychological impact it's had on people around the world, 
uh, and all the worries people have, uh, strangely enough, it's, it's going to trigger an appetite for sort of joyful uh, combinations of color in jewelry. Um, do, do, you, do you think this is strangely enough um, a, a great moment of opportunity for the Thai um, gemstone exports? You know, for 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 the moment, if I if the pandemic this is not uh, longer than we expected, I believe we're gonna have a significant rate of recovery or the demand after the pandemic. I can see from my own uh, company experience for the past two months, there are increasing order from everywhere around the world, especially from China. You know, like I, I believe the local market in China is moving. I believe I heard from my friend in China, my customer in China, like uh, the local market for the gems trading moving around, pick up about 60 or 70% at least for now. And just 10 minutes ago, I, I just received WeChat from my customer request for the very important stone, something like that. I believe after the pandemic, everything going to be better than we thought. Yeah. That's very encouraging. And, and I, I can say from my end, uh, somebody who covers the high uh, value auctions market in jewelry, that there's been very robust demand for color gemstones at the very top end of that market. Um, uh, for example, uh, Sotheby's in late April, at the height of the lockdown, sold a Cartier Tutti Frutti, very high color uh, gemstone bracelet, uh, an Art Deco piece for $1.3 million, which was a world record price at that time for any jewel sold online at auction. Um, before I ask you the next question, I just want to quickly say to viewers, we're going to run that video again a bit later. We had some uh, sound issues earlier, but um, we're going to run it just before the Q&A. Um, but uh, Mr. Fouquet, let me ask you next. Um, how do you see, if you like, the colored gemstone business changing um, as we emerge out of this uh, lockdown? I mean, w w how will the dynamics of colored gemstone trade evolve going forward? I believe uh, given that pe people are obviously uh, in some cases less willing or able to travel. I mean, d does this create new opportunities for digital technologies in color gemstone trading? Yes, I believe digital technology will take important part for the trading from now on. You know, in the, in the beginning of pandemic, like let's say in China, we start have this problem in January, right? And now worldwide has the crazy problem about this pandemic. We are expecting to sell the stone during the gem show in June in Hong Kong. No, it's not possible. Or even in September, not possible. Even in Bangkok show or in Hong Kong. And we don't know how it's going to be getting better. So I think the digital platform or digital technology can help for the selling. But importantly, like uh, every company has to know their product, how to communicate their product to the end user. Gemstone business is not like a diamond. Like you say, you, you can just order what color, what clarity is easy, and you can just compare the price. But for the color stone, different country has different tastes of the color. For example, uh, Japanese maybe love the a little pink ruby. China market maybe need the pigeon blood or the deeper color. It's different. In European, they not prefer the dark color because of the weather there make the stone become darker. They prefer a little lighter ruby, for example. So this uh, digital platform or maybe how to communicate digitally to your customer is difficult. This is why you have to study your product. Yeah. So uh, among, among ideas that I know are being thought about <clears throat> are the possibilities, if you like, of having a, a digital buyer-seller meeting, perhaps hosted by a trade fair, um, do you think that could possibly have potential um, ha or hosting Zoom meetings in which a uh, buyer communicate with seller and the seller showcases the colored gemstone uh, and the colored gemstone jewelry in a Zoom meeting using camera technology, uh, showing the product to the buyer. Do, do you think these are areas that can be explored further that have potential and, and can the Bangkok Fair be the host of, of, of potentially of this kind of initiative? 
Yeah, of course, I believe so because of the you know the advance of the technology. We cannot do that ten years ago, but by now it's easy. I show I give you some example like uh, uh, Kun Pat mentioned earlier that we have the Chandri International Games Show last year, the first time in the internationally. We have some customer from China come to our show and use just mobile phone, you know, take video selecting the stone, selling on WeChat immediately. Or even in Hong Kong show, many of my customers come to my booth, use just WeChat, take the video, talk to customers in, and you know, they can pay up to maybe $100,000 stone with, without seeing the real stone. Yeah. So it's very potential and you know, like, uh, I think all organization have to come up with such easier platform for this uh, selling. Thank you. So technology is very much the, the way forward, um, but there's still a need for networking, physical networking and physical um, interaction between buyer and seller who know each other at every possible opportunity. So I, I, let's hope that uh, the situation of the coronavirus pandemic uh, eases up uh, as soon as possible. W one last thing, Mr. Fouquet, if I may ask you, um, I, I had spoken with um, Mr. Ung earlier about the possibility that um, manufacturing uh, facilities companies in Hong Kong and mainland China could uh, consider relocating some of their operations to Thailand. Just wondering what your thoughts are about that. Um, uh, do you think Thailand would be a, a, an effective hub for manufacturing for such companies? Yeah, I, I, I can uh, answer this into two categories, okay? One thing is like uh, every investor who come to Thailand need the government support or maybe the trade benefit like the tax or something like that, which we already have. You know, for example, we have the general police, we have the board of investment, which you can just set up factory easily. And I can tell you there are big uh, tax benefit compared to every local Thai. The second thing, if you make something, you, have, you need to be close to the supply, okay? For the diamond, gold, silver, you can order anywhere. But if you come to Thailand, you sit next to the source of color gemstone. You know, like uh, I myself have the gemstone factory partner with Japanese company in Chantaburi. They move some part to Thailand from other country because they think they can just do design. Just see the stone, what we have, and they do the design. On the other hand, on the own, in the own, old way, and just purchase gemstone to do jewelry by the design of the designer. Sometimes, you know, I have, I give you some example. I have the request plenty of stone for one production, which is not possible. I can say, you come to or you come to Thailand, see what we have, you decide what we have because gemstone, we, we cannot do like the iPhone. It's very rare, the material is very rare. So it's the reason that Everybody who come to Thailand to do the factory will have two way of benefit, one from the government, one from the way that you stay really close for the supply with the supplier. Yeah. So really, in a sense, Thailand is offering the, the, the perfect combination. You've got the, uh, mm -hmm. the manufacturing skill sets, the craftsmanship um, honed over generations. You've got the supply of uh, rare color gemstone materials and the cutting capabilities. And on top of that, you've got all the tax benefits. So this is a, yeah. something that uh, manufacturers need to think about carefully, uh, relocating operations to Thailand. Yeah, and also leisure also. Do yes, the same as course. business trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay. You know, beaches and uh, hospitality, tourism yeah. facilities and so forth, fantastic. Well, I'm going to so the beach after that. the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're all virtual. It'd be a shame we can't just transplant ourselves over to um, a beach in Thailand right now. All right. Um, I'd just like to thank you for that and, and then move on to speak with uh, Mr. Henry Ho, uh, who is president of the Bangkok Diamonds and Precious Stones Exchange. Uh, Henry, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome. Thank you, David. Thank you. How are you We're today? Yes. Very good. Um, let me just ask you a, a general question. Um, the 
pandemic has clearly um, overturned the world. Um, do, do you feel this has created um, a, an opportunity for um, consumers to buy, if you like, joyful combinations of colour in gemstones and in gem set jewellery? Yes, I, I feel that uh, the pandemic has, uh, has caused people to have some frustrations and uh, they have this pent up uh, wish to really splurge on, on, on these trinkets. I, I myself uh, know several people that have made, given me orders to, to low. And um, the um, pandemic, uh, has it, um, what kind of digital opportunities for gemstone trade do you foresee um, as a result of the pandemic? We, we've clearly seen during the crisis uh, the acceleration in, in the use of digital technologies across the global uh, jewellery and gemstone trade. Um, what opportunities do you see for uh, digital technologies to be increasingly used for the benefit of Thai uh, gemstone and jewellery exports? Oh, you need to unmute. Can you unmute? Yes, I have unmuted. Okay, once again, uh, at this very moment, we are speaking to several uh, technology companies who have provided platforms for us. Uh, our own Jewelry Trade Center building, we are thinking of uh, building an e-commerce platform. And also, in the short and long of it, we want to make it the building a smart and uh, uh, digital company. So we are, we are going through a, a transformational stage of going digital in every aspect of our daily lives. Well, that's really exciting. Uh, that's a great piece of news. Um, can you elaborate a little bit about that? Tell us a bit more. And I, I know you have many gemstone suppliers in the jewellery trade centre uh, on Silom Road in, in Bangkok. Um, they presumably will be increasingly, increasingly engaged digitally, will they? Uh, to showcase their product and potentially export it. Uh, and, and the JTC will be helping those suppliers to showcase their product? Yes, uh, we are creating an awareness and we're creating an educational program for them to become more familiar with software. For instance, uh, we are giving them a package of CRM to, to follow up on the customers so they know about uh, uh, customer follow-ups and, and how to use the relational uh, uh, management software. We are also providing them an ERP inventory software so that they are uh, aware of what they have. And from this inventory program, you can easily click and it will go under the trading program where we can uh, buy and sell. In fact, because uh, our jewelry trade center uh, is uh, very much involved with the central department store, they have a, a very large database of consumers who uh, remain to be very active and they wish to uh, tap into our, our market. So I'm extending the platform to a B2C as well as a B2B. So I see a lot of uh, opportunities using digital uh, uh, technology here. And will the jewellery trade centre be using social media marketing platforms like Instagram increasingly to showcase Thai manufactured uh, gemstones and jewellery? Yes, we use social platforms as well. Uh, we have uh, sp uh, specialists who, who uh, monitor and analyze data and we try to maximize the contact points and the conversion points. Okay, very good. Well, that's, that's quite a piece of news today. So thank you so much for that and um, wish the JTC uh, all the best with that. Um, turning to sustainability, which is um, an issue increasingly at the forefront, I know, of, of many consumers' minds. How important do you feel that a sustainable supply chain is in coloured gemstones? And um, do, do you feel that the Thai industry is increasingly moving in the direction of trying to ensure that the entire supply chain from mine uh, to finger is as sustainable as it possibly can be? I think the intention is there and it's where quite obvious that the, the supply chain is uh, very 
important part and Thailand plays a, a very a critical role in the processing of uh, jewelry and designs. So uh, last evening we had a, a discussion with Demopolis and uh, we're thinking of uh, creating a, a, uh, a, a warehouse for gemstones, uh, rough gemstones, uh, all varieties, so that uh, uh, manufacturers, designers, and dealers can have easy access. So that, I think, is the basis of, of how to continue uh, this uh, supply chain and make it more efficient and more colorful and more dynamic, I guess. So in the case of that warehouse, the origin of those stones is fully known and documented, is it? So the entire journey of the uh, gemstone would be known. Yes, we're using blockchain technology and uh, smart contracts. So as in as much as we can uh, trace and track, we will do so. But that would be for the uh, more expensive uh, materials. Uh, for the cheaper yeah. ones, uh, will be n uh, uh, not feasible to be tracking them. Yeah, well, that's really encouraging. And, and the, the fact that the Thai industry is using blockchain shows that it's right at the forefront of technology. Uh, increasingly, several studies have shown uh, of millennial and also Gen Z consumer behavior that they really do want to know the entire journey of gemstones from mine to finger. They want to know where the gems, the gems came from uh, and that um, nobody was exploited at any stage in the supply chain and that the environment was not uh, degraded any more than absolutely necessary. Um, presumably you, you um, strongly support this notion that uh, responsible sourcing where possible is the ideal way forward for the industry? Yes, well, I'm very aware of all the movements and uh, recently there was a, a, a creation of a Colorstone community platform where all the branded uh, uh, jewelry brands uh, have uh, uh, joined the platform in order to uh, filter the suppliers and make sure that all the suppliers meet the KYC and MLO and uh, the 17 UN SDGs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is so important and, and the fact that Thailand is fully engaged in this, uh, you know, aiming for responsible sourcing at every possible level and supporting the sustainable development goals um, will be critical to uh, ensuring that the best possible um, business outlook also for the high gemstone and jewelry industry, which is the third largest export earner of the Thai economy. Um, so if I could ask you, um, Henry, um, regarding diamonds, um, what are the prospects for growth of the Thai diamond sector and in which segments of the market? I think the uh the opportunities for growing the, the diamond business here in the ASEAN country is tremendous. Uh, we are uh, growing, uh, we are one of the fastest growing uh, area in the world, for economic speaking. And uh, I've spoken to uh, Yoram Gvash, the president of the World Federation of Diamond Bosses, how to extend the B2B uh, platform into a B2C so that the 650 million people here, plus a couple of billion people, uh, neighbors around us, can tap into the uh, supply chain. Okay. So uh, there was a discussion earlier about tax policy, the fact that Thailand over the years has worked very hard to create a favorable tax regime to encourage um, the gemstone business. Um, do, do you see um, any potential changes uh, in tax policy that would benefit uh, even further uh, the Thai gemstone, diamond and jewelry export sectors? Yes, I, I see that it's, it's uh, critical that the government and the private sector work together especially two of the most important uh, uh, segments are the silver uh, people and the gemstones people. The silver people are, are trying to get the same kind of uh, treatment as the gold uh, people without uh, too many barriers and uh, allow the smaller dealers to participate in the policies that the Thai government has uh, allowed. I think uh, more and more we'd have to uh, try to work together and learn from 
uh, both Hong Kong and Singapore. And just finally, if I may ask you, um, we're living through a time, uh, apart from the virus, of uh, heightened uh, trade tensions between the United States and, and China. Um, what are your feelings about the possibilities for um, Hong Kong and Chinese factories, manufacturing facilities to uh, relocate to Thailand? Uh, Do you think Thailand is the, offers the right kind of mix of uh, skills uh, and infrastructure for uh, manufacturing? Facilities from Hong Kong. I think uh, Thailand is the uh, uh, it's a wonderful country and it's uh, it's uh, good in so many aspects. It's very diverse. It's, uh, it's got the talent pool and uh, it is uh, ready to receive any companies, uh, Hong Kong and other other places. But we welcome them with open arms. Uh, so uh, I, I see a tremendous opportunity in this area. Because Thailand has the, the full offering, doesn't it? The manufacturing yes. capability, yes. the craftsmanship, the tax benefits, the provision of materials, and yes. the skilled labor. Yes. Um, it's, it's all the, uh, the combination of small parts that makes the whole very, very attractive. Very good. Well, thanks so much for that. So now, um, before we go into the Q&A, we're going to have another go at showing the video uh, of the Bangkok Gems and Jewelry Fair. So um, let's uh, watch the video. to move across to the Q&A and I would like to invite viewers and um, we've got very good attendance to today I see uh, to please submit uh, questions on the Q&A function just on the Q&A function please um, and I'd just like to start off with a question uh, from Jose Bolak. Um, we, we were referring earlier to the opportunities for exports of Thai silver jewellery uh, in this period due to the um, surge in gold prices. Gold has become extraordinarily costly now. Um, gold um, hit an all-time high in price earlier this month and is potentially going to be testing uh, unprecedented areas around $2,000 per ounce uh, in the coming weeks. This creates um, an opportunity for silver, uh, for Thai silver exports. Um, uh, Jose is asking what kinds of um, uh, design combinations involving silver that we could potentially see with uh, colored gemstones. Uh, for example, are we going to see uh, more combinations of silver with aquamarine, colored sapphires, 
even with diamonds. Um, I'd like to uh, ask particularly um, Mr. Uh, Al uh, for uh, your views on this. I mean, what sort of unusual combinations potentially can we see involving silver with colored gemstones? And if you could give a few potential examples of the sorts of combinations that you think would be attractive in jewelry designs. We need to unmute. Okay. You hear me right now? Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. I think that uh, the, the color combination of the uh, semi precious stone, uh, the one of the good choices is uh, um, sorry. Uh, one of the good choices is uh, uh, semi precious stone is a tamarind. Uh, move to Hong Kong and China, people like the, uh, uh, different kind of the color of the uh, tamarind. And the other thing is the color sapphire. And uh, the yellow sapphire, uh, pink sapphire is uh, quite popular in Hong Kong and China right now. And, uh, uh, and the other things I think is uh, some can be with the uh, topaz or emphasis with the uh, uh, center stone and uh, uh, all around setting with some uh, different colors of like the uh, yellow sapphire to uh, to have a different combinations. They will be coming very nice. Okay, thank you very much. W would any other panelists like to come in on that? Um, please do so if you wish to answer. Mr. Fouquet? No, okay. Um, we have a question from uh, Evert de Grave asking, uh, and I think this question would be for Henry, um, is there a, a lab-grown diamond uh, infrastructure or uh, facility in Thailand? Uh, is there any, say, manufacturing of lab-grown diamonds uh, in Thailand? And what, what potential do you think there could be uh, for um, manufacturing of lab-grown diamonds in Thailand? Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of talk about lab-grown uh, diamonds here yeah. but uh, not, they're not not yet uh, organized yet we we don't we haven't really seen seen we haven't seen them yet but there's a lot of talk about uh, uh, traditional uh, dealers uh, switching to lab grown diamonds I, I believe in the future that we we will have uh, such such a business but it will be totally uh, segregated so be separate from our traditional uh, suppliers. Yeah. If I could ask um, Mrs. Uh, Shannon Pat um, to give your views on what you feel are the main strengths of the Thai gemstone and jewelry industry. And um, if you were to sum up how you feel that um, uh, the trading relationship between Thailand and Hong Kong can uh, develop in the best ways forward, uh, how do you see the outlook for this trade? We need to unmute, please. Okay. Um, for the trade relationship between Thailand and Hong Kong for the gems and jewelry business, it's always very good indeed because, as I told you, that um, is we we also have the um, very good for the government support, and we also have um, strategic partnership with the Hong Kong, like for like G2G and also the for the B2B, even like for the many of the association, we can work together. Um, and also, I, I can see that um, for the import and export for Thailand and Hong Kong, um, actually is uh, important, very important figure that you can see. Um, Hong Kong is our um, important destination, yes. Mm. And I think like um, Kevin and uh, um, Kenny, and they are also uh, our uh, best counterpart for, for the gems and jewelry business for between Thailand and Hong Kong too. We have a, a question um, again uh, for Mrs. Uh, Shannon Pat. Um, when will the next webinar be? Uh, is DITP planning uh, further webinars in the weeks ahead? Uh, for the webinar for the DITP in Hong Kong, right? Uh, just you know, I guess for for the industry. 
Uh, is DITP planning further webinars? Oh yeah, but, but but for I mean um, for the um, uh, Mangkok Gem Century, they have an online on the November second to fourth. However, for the DITP Hong Kong, we also have the webinar on the wellness and uh, property in Thailand, as Mr. Phuket as the Mr. Phuket that he mentioned, Thailand is not a place only for the business that you also can just like invest here, working here, like to relocate to Thailand. But we also that like, um, it's the place that you can have a very good life, happiness, and we have a very good wellness to take care of you. And also for the property, um, that's why uh, right now, uh, I, I promote on, on this matter for the wellness and property. The wellness will be on the 15th, uh, on the 27th of August. And for the Thai property webinar will be um, 15th of September. So don't miss it. Thank you. Great, well, thanks so much. So I'd just like to thank everybody, all the panelists for joining us today. It's been a very wide ranging discussion uh, and quite educational, uh, looking at the uh, breadth and range of the Thai uh, gem and jewelry export industry and the outlook for a really important trading relationship, which is that with the Hong Kong market. And of course, the great importance of Hong Kong as a gateway to China. Um, and clearly we've emphasized the uh, great uh, supreme skills of Thai uh, gem and jewelry craftsmanship honed over generations and indeed uh, the state-of-the-art manufacturing capabilities that make Thailand now a very attractive place for uh, manufacturing facilities from Hong Kong and mainland China to relocate to. Um, and also the tax benefits that Thailand offers uh, to uh, the gem and jewelry industry um, and the sheer uh, availability of uh, precious materials from uh, metals to gemstones uh, in the country. Uh, all of which combined with the fabulous hospitality, of course, for which Th Thailand is so well known, uh, make the country a great place uh, from which to uh, continue to uh, take every possible opportunity to boost uh, exports of gemstones and jewelry. Uh, it's the third biggest uh, export generator for the Thai economy, uh, accounting for well over $10 billion a year of um, income. So very important sector for Thailand. Um, so um, uh, Mrs. Shannon Patz, thank you so much for um, organizing all of this. We appreciate the uh, time and the opportunity. Thank you so much all the panelists uh, for joining today. Um, and uh, stay safe, everybody. Hey, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.